Hi, I'm Angie Monko. I'm an energy healer specializing in grief and trauma. And today I want to talk to you about how abandonment trauma causes us to drown while trying to save others. Abandonment trauma causes us to drown while attempting to save others because we forget our own needs and importance and we focus on everybody else. Trauma gets stored in the body um, in, in a cellular memory and it records every experience we've ever had. Um, so today I just wanna focus on how feeling abandoned, this trauma can affect our nervous system and our lives. Um, trauma and abandonment trauma could be due to neglect, abuse, the death of a parent or someone we love, our parents' divorce, or some little T trauma. If the mean that we assign to an event feels overwhelming to our nervous system, it gets stored as trauma. So what is trauma and specifically abandonment trauma? Trauma, according to Dr. Amy Apagian, a trauma specialist, is anything that causes an experience of overwhelm in the body. So trauma equals overwhelm. And two things cause that. Too much too fast, whirlwind of activity, or too little for too long, like love, support, and connection. Specifically in relation to abandonment, you can imagine that it's this, it's trauma related to abandonment, feeling like we are on hyper alert, that some part of us is defective, and that when someone gets to really know us, they will leave us. So how do you know if you're in this trauma? Body sensations would be feeling very heavy, emotionally, slow moving energy. Um, thoughts might be things like, it's too much, what's the point? Why should I open my heart to someone? They're just gonna leave me anyway. Why bother? Now the third way that we know that we're in abandonment trauma is by our physical health. Trauma often has autoimmune responses, inflammatory type illnesses like brain fog, that's inflammation of the brain, or um, chronic fatigue, chronic pain, chronic health conditions, um, skin conditions, and like I said, autoimmune. Now, what is the effect of what we call the attachment style on abandonment trauma? So your abandonment trauma may not even be conscious to you right now. You may have had a decent childhood, um, but a lot of our trauma is set up by what is called our attachment style. And there's a secure attachment, which we all want, and then there's three types of insecure attachments that would have a huge effect on whether we feel traumatized and abandoned. So let's start with the insecure attachments. The first one we call the anxious. And this is when someone can feel very clingy and very needy, seeking another's love and approval so that they feel good about themselves. Um, they have a strong fear of abandonment from their partner. So that's the anxious. The second one is avoidant. Um, this is when a partner has an avoidant attachment style, they can be a loner and put walls up around their heart. And they might feel very emotionally distant to you. Um, they keep you at a distance, emotionally speaking and they will avoid emotional closeness and connection, there is a fear of intimacy here. The third insecure one is called fearful dash slash avoidance. It's sort of a combination of the two above. Um, they actually do want to have intimacy and connection, but they really have a hard time trusting others because of fear of being hurt. Okay, now let's talk about the secure attachment. This is the one we all want to have. So this is, um, this is where you feel secure in your relationships and your ability to express your emotions honestly and openly. Um, adults with a secure attachment can depend on their partners and in turn, let their partners rely on them. Um, they thrive in their relationships, but they also don't fear being on their own. They do not depend on the responsiveness or approval of their partners, and they tend to have a positive view of themselves and others. So based on these definitions, can you see how our attachment style growing up would have a huge impact on whether we feel abandoned or not? The anxious attachment style as well as the fearful avoidant are gonna have a harder time with this. Remember that trauma is not caused by an event, but by our, ability, our body's ability to process the event, something we call nervous system regulation. And the stronger our capacity to regulate the nervous system, the more resilient we are. So let me show, share with you a story of Johnny's abandonment to help you understand some of these concepts. So Johnny was a 
happy-go-lucky boy with a secure attachment style until he was 10 years old. And when he was 10, he lost his parents tragically in a car accident. And it changed him. You know, he, he didn't feel as relaxed and carefree as he once did, naturally. His aunt took him in and she raised him. She was a good, good uh, caregiver, but she wasn't comfortable with talking about feelings. And so, you know, he was quiet. He really wanted to talk and that suited her fine because she didn't really want to hear. And so this caused him to really bottle up a lot of emotions inside of him. And he unwillingly decided that it wasn't safe to love anyone as much as he did his parents. And so he developed this fearful avoidant attachment as a result of the trauma of his parents dying. So as Johnny continued to get older, he found that he found great comfort in helping and giving to others. And it, take, it took his mind off of his own grief and his own pain. And so when he turned 16, he had his first girlfriend and he noticed that he seemed to be more into her than she was into him. And what he didn't know is that she had an avoidant attachment style. Um, and he felt hard for her. Um, he tried to set up times to get together with her regularly, but she'd often not return his calls. That's part of the avoidant. Um, and it drove him crazy. Um, when he'd get hurt, he'd withdraw into his avoidant shell and sort of revengefully not respond to her. So this cycle continued on until she went off to college and they broke up. But he continually sought out women who were non-committal as he got older, thinking that, well, I guess I'm just too nice and women don't go for the nice guys. So after each subsequent break up, Johnny would retract into his avoidant protective shell, what he called the wall of shame, and he would just keep doing this and, until um, he got bored and restless and he, you know, he was doing hobbies and things to keep his mind off of things, but he'd eventually go back into finding another woman and they, he thought that they looked independent, successful, well put together, but inside, deep down, they had that avoidant attachment style. And so after enough of these breakups, Johnny began to realize enough is enough. Maybe I just need to heal myself. And so um, he did. He started looking within, trying to figure out how he could change his trauma pattern. So how do you heal from abandonment trauma? You have to have a felt sense of safety in the body. So you have to go to your body and not go to the head for answers because seeking out more information is not the answer. So we have to feel safe in the body and then we have to feel supported like someone has our back and that we can trust them. And once we feel safe and supported, then we can begin to process the trauma and to release it. In other words, you got to stop running from the feelings and you got to feel to heal. That's a common saying in my area. <laughs> um, and how we do this matters. You know, no one else is going to do this for us. We have to support ourselves. We have to learn that we can regulate our nervous system. Okay. So if you check the notes, I give you a be present and connect to the body exercise. So I'm going to refer you to those notes to do that because it's so, so powerful. As far as the support piece, I'd love to support you. So if you go to harmonyharbor.com, go to the contact page, reach out to me, let's chat and see how you can move through this trauma. Mm -hmm.